All right, we're gonna go in and see how we finished in the last tournament. I was in first when I left last night, so we'll see. There was like three or four hours left. First, look at that, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Look at all the 35s. I knew you were gonna have to pick up at least one, but then you get caught in tiebreakers. Let's see who came in third. They had a 34, so somebody did pop up there and shoot a 35, and I shot a 33 in the uh, opener, so I would have came in fourth if I got caught up in tiebreakers. Winner, winner. There we go. Got my berserkers back. Let's see what we got. Let's see... 14 Grim Reapers and 10 Horizons. I'm trying to get that Horizon maxed out so I can uh, get it out of the pool. 27 Berserkers. Yes. All right. All right. There we have it. What is our what is our ball this week? Power 10, Top Spin Boost 5. All right, we have the Alpine Peaks tournament just started today. I this whole thing about tournaments going, I I suppose it's watch out what you wish for. You know, it was bad enough when we had a nine hole cup and then a tournament and then a nine hole cup and then a tournament and then a nine hole cup and then a tournament forever. But it's even worse now. <laughs> this tournament, 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 tournament really blows. I don't think I have anything else to do here. All right, let's go check it out. We have the Alpine Tournament. Today is the first day of qualifying. Let's go, let's do a, a scouting report practice round all at once. Now, if I remember correctly, on this Grunberg Slopes, there was a glitch when this course came out and this is the first course that I can remember where we had that swirling the cup and doing 75 times around and then the reverse funnel and then it would pop the ball out once the ball if a ball comes up to a hole and swirls the cup and comes out over here that's pretty much like a gravity assist that's how we shoot stuff in the outer space you start doing orbits now you're caught in the gravitational pull of the hole, the cup, and you're going to fall in the hole. And for a ball to come down and swirl the cup several times and then bounce out, that means that you have a reverse funnel. <laughs> You've got some kind of ribbing on here that's like pulling the ball out and throwing the ball out of the hole. Once the ball starts falling into the cup, it, it, it's not coming out. And this is the first course that I saw where we had that issue it seemed like there was another glitch when this whole when this course first came out too where we we were getting some lag we were getting there was a little bit of a glitch in the system and i think the albatross of all was the first power 10 top spin boost ball that ever came out and this was the course that it originally came out on so having a uh, i think there was a lot of holes in here that having some top spin boost was a was a good deal and this hole right here is is definitely one of them if you can get on this hole we can try and get up through this where we can get on and i know like if you're down in this area right here it's a a wedge depending on where your clubs are i think it's pretty much a wedge no matter what and in the past it's always been minus 10. even if you get over to the other side over here you want to be cog it's there's you still want to probably take a little bit of wind off we will see what we can do here i have overshot this several times i've been on the back side and it is easy to do it is and it's definitely a hole that's best served with a uh, bigger ball but i'm going to lay it up in front and we'll try and chip it on the the thing about hitting it onto the onto it is that Depending on which way the wind's blowing, it's going to depend on how much effort you have to put into it. And I'm going to try to do it with just a three power ball. We'll just try and do it with a tight, the king of balls. That's right. 
Here we roll. Here we roll. Getting out on the course. I have no notes. I have no nothing. I don't even have any club notes. I left my uh, book in the my office, so I'm going to have to run over and grab it. And you can see if you have a five power ball, you can start off on that side. So then it's a bounce, steady bounce. You get one bounce, you get your ne next bounce, and you're trying to bridge that gap. Now you have to put topspin on it in order to get over. So if you hit it clear and you hit it with too much power, you're going to roll off the back side. So. I might take this with a berserker. What are you frowny facing for? They must be ahead. There we go. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. You can't catch it. If you clip that rough and do a rough bump out and you're halfway up the hill. It's kind of ideal. So even with a three power ball right there, putting on curl, you could get that curl with an extra mile. You see where that second bounce is and try and bleed up out of it with, with just a three power ball. I don't like the fact that I'm only one ring away. 2.9 divided by 1.2 is 2.41 rings. There's the four one. There's the two. Hitting it perfect. And just try and bleed yourself up there. Now even from here, it's still... You're in that range where wind's not that big of a factor, but you still want to be... Uh, it's still an easy chip to miss. I would definitely, definitely do the rough bump. For sure. And wind's not going to really play a big factor right there. I, uh, that's about where I'd move it, just off the flagpole. We'll see if my opponent can hit perfect and get it in there. They might be able to catch a great to the excellent. Fantastic. Nice shot. Nice shot. There's mid. Man, I'm in the quarter range. The quarter quarter club range. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go right on the other side of the cup. And I said that wrong. I meant right on the other side of the flagpole. <laughs> and you hit a great. See, that's the distance right there. If you hit it, you got to hit it perfect. Got to hit it perfect. I actually like, I know my opponent made it from the rough, but if you make it all the way over on that hole, if you make it all the way over so that you get bounce number two, bounce number three, and you're running, there's a good chance that you're going to overshoot the green because you've got to have you've got so much topspin on that it, it it just has a really good shot you almost want to do a rough bump to get over i being out in this area right here is going to be a pretty common area to be in and the deal is is the flagpole was here the wind was blowing 3.5 that way right to left and i set mine up right here so if wind was a factor, it pushed me back towards the center. You gotta hit it perfect from that distance. That's the deal, that's it. 
That's why that's that's why we have a whole week to, to get this stuff done. All right. Now there are several ways that we can play this, and the new ball inventories have opened up some other shots. So number one is you can lay up right here and you can go at it, and it is way downhill from here to there. Or you can run down this arm. I will tell you the one thing about running over here to the right is if you bring out the right stuff, you can get way up here to the tip. And I have made, the shots that I've made on this, I've probably made more Albies from up in this area. You got a really nice shot from up here and you can work it out. But here's the deal about this side. This side ramps up like this and where I'm trying to hit is way up here. And so if you land right here, or if you land right here, or if you land in any of these other spots, the, the, the variable is a little different. So what you want to do is hit out to a spot that you're comfortable with, that you can get to without having to do something heroic. And if that spot is right there, then you need to work that number. But if you over hit one day and you end up up here, realize that that number might not work. Or if you don't get enough of it and you end up right here, the variable that you're using to make your shot to the cup from here is not going to be the same because of it. it's you're on a big ramp. The other way that you can go if you bring the right stuff and we got the right wind direction is you can go to try and get to the other side and end up down in here or even closer. Your red line if I remember correctly, if you bring out the big stuff, you might be able you might be able to get a window over here, but you can get down into the tip of this. If you bring out a mortal ball, you're going to be back in here trying to run it up the run it up the ramp or bring it back around. But if you bring out something big and we got wind going in the right direction, you might be able to get yourself going off in that in that area. We'll see which way the wind's blowing. Hole number two. And I cannot remember what the adjustment was from way up there at the tip, but it's like, man, I'm 20% keeps comes to mind. If I can find an opponent, the big IF. Dean P. Welcome to the channel. Let me go first. Oh, we can get over there with a three power ball. Excellent. Now you can see where that second bounce is. I'm already in the rough. But if I brought out and I used the wind. I'm going to use the wind. 4.5 divided by 1.2 is 3.75 rings. We'll see if we can bounce over that sand and end up going down on the other side. Bounce number one. That's number two. Boom. We're slightly higher than the cup from right here, but we're not near what we'd be if we were on the up there at the top where the sand trap's at, or if we were on this side over here. You can see how much this side over here ramps up. I'm going to do like a 10% adjustment with wherever I'm at in my club. Man, they were on the right. Look at that with the five power ball. If they'd have cleared that sand, they'd be in an awesome spot. The thorn. There's men. There's Max. There's men. And the men club. It's 3.5 per ring. Two 
3.3 divided by 3.5.72 of a ring Isn't it perfect? In the hole! Woo! And that was probably a little more than 10%. It's hard to see the rings when you're that close. What I should have did because of where I was at is I should have spun around and I should have pushed the wind out. I would have had a better view of it on that side. I probably did like 0.8 right there. Be in the hole. Alright, what do we have in store for us for hole number three? Now we're back on real courses where we have a four, five, and a three in some combination, and then we have another four, five, and a three. Is this a three? It is a three. I cannot remember. I think it's plus 10, and there is a rough bump that you can do right here to come at the cup. I know the very first time I ever played on this hole, I got a hole in one. And I think I was playing it from the pro tees back here, and it seemed like it was one of those deals where you were in a, if you're playing from the pro tees and you're hitting it from over here, it's, it seems like this was one of those deals where, even though you weren't at max club, you played max club. Like you're at mid, but you played max. So we will see. We'll see if 10% works. I'm not sure what ball you had to bring. I think you needed a three side spin ball. I'll take a kingmaker, and if I don't need it, I'll switch to a katana. You might be able to play it with a low with a lower power ball, but let's make sure we've got the stuff. And it is with a sniper. Overlord, 1.1 times the wind. It might have just been, I think it was, we were adding on 10%, but from where I'm at, I'm going to be at max club and I'll need to add on 10. Let's see what my opponent does. Let's watch them carefully. See if they move 3.2 rings or if they move more. Two, three. They moved about three, maybe three, two. They moved to full pull. Perfect. Ooh. From that perspective, it was an over pull. There's Max. There's Min. Uh, so I'm at mid club. I'm gonna just do I'm I'm gonna just do one to one. I'm gonna do 2.4. Two point four rings. Hitting it perfect. <laughs> Just a bit outside. And I might have over pulled it. That's close. So it's mid club, one to one. So basically, you're hitting 10% at mid club. So with a sniper, it's 1.1 at mid. And so the equation would be the wind time, or excuse me, let's start over. It would be the wind 
divided by 1.1, but if we're going to add on 10%, it'd be 1.1 times the wind. So these balance each other out, and all we have left is the wind. And it might be the wind minus one or it's something, but it's going to be really tight down there. A very small adjustment. A low wind ball would help too because you could get down in there and you wouldn't have to pull over the sand and the sand is slightly distorting the rings. Hole number four. Hole number four. All right, let me try and remember. Okay, okay. I'm going to show you two shots, and then I'm not going to do either one of those. Shot number one is you can hit it out of here with the most accurate... Hey, Buster, bro. You can hit it out here with the most accurate driver that you have. Someone's got a good ball guide. You get out here to the tip, and you got a straight-up shot at the cup. Now you can, and there's a bunch of different ways that you can do it, and depending on what clubs you have, you're going to have to figure it out. I mean, there's just, like, you'll have to figure it out with whatever clubs you're using. You can start off from over here, and if we look at where the tee box is at, and we draw ourselves, you want to end up right here, so we draw ourselves a line to the tee box, so now you've got to figure out how to get there, and you're going to have to come up into this area, and you're going to have to curl it back around. The trick is not to over curl it where you get caught up in the rough. And the trick is not to under curl it where you just end up in the sand. You have this small little target zone down here. And so you're hitting for that small little target zone. It's, it's not out of the realm of possibility to lay yourself up here. But in order to get over to that spot, you got to put so much topspin on it. It's going to roll down. And so... If you're off trajectory even a little bit, you'll clip the rough. Now, you might clip the rough and bleed out and still be in the fairway, but you've got a nice shot. I mean, obviously, people are doing it because you got a nice shot from right here. What I'm going to do, and I cannot remember how to do it, so I'm going to have to go out and we're going to, I'm going to practice this hole and we'll figure out how to do it. There is a max overpower hook shot you can do, and I'm pretty sure that we can do it with a katana. Where you start off on this side and you're coming around and you try and get bounce number one, bounce number two, and you're up here. Now I've ended up in this rough right here quite a few times, but you can end up right up on the hole. And this is definitely worth worth your, your time to figure out how to do this with your clubs. do I have what 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 are my options let's see what a let's see what my other options are All right we'll try it I got to sneeze. We'll see what we can get done here. Busta. Practice. I want to see that practice, 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 practice. And when I get out here, I might remember the spot. I like to do max overpower hook shots where I mark the spot. So I can go back to that same spot. Depending on which way the wind's blowing, you might have to make adjustments on that spot as the wheat goes through. But at least you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you come out here. My opponent's actually got not, not a bad idea of trying to just blast it out there and get a bounce out of the rough and see if you can end up just coming up in this area. They hit that perfect. Seems like it's going to clip right there and then bleed out. That's exactly what I was talking about. You got a nice shot from right there, but it's not nearly as good as if you're up, up on the green. Ooh. 
I'm going to just put five topspin on. We'll see what that gets us. I want to be, I want to be right there. So there's, there's ten rings. There's twenty. Okay, see how my my ring set is even with that stone? I'm going to come in a little bit from that spot. Let's try it. And we'll see if we can catch the fairway and see if we need to go out or in. We need to go out just a little bit farther. Unfortunately, I'll have to play this out and then uh, practice it again. I actually think that might be too much ball. But I don't think a quasar has enough curl, excuse me, side spin to get you around the band. Right at max. trying to dunk definitely pushed it off big time big all right let's try that again good game good game my man let's try that one more time now we know where to go I'm gonna move out two rings I'm going to put six topspin on it. Although I think that might be too much. I'm going to, I, I'd rather be too much on the first if I can get over. The squirrels are out in force today. Messing with the puppies. There's six. Okay, I was there. At rest, see my, you can see my blue ring is on that stone right there. That's where I want to start off at rest. Now let's take the wind out. Should be two and a little. I'm going to do two and a half rings. Let's see if we can catch the fairway. Nice. Nice. There you go. There you have it. Now, would you rather take that shot? Now, I could actually move it. I was blue ring off down there. And that where that rock was at, that rock was there and I was blue ring off. I could actually move it about maybe a quarter of a ring to the left. And it would... I still had room from the first bounce and it would put my trajectory more down through the middle. We'll try it one more time when we go out there on the real course. Nice. Nice shot. Nice shot, my man.
making it perfect. In the hole. Wind definitely pushed it off. Definitely. All right. Now we have a game plan. For me, these max overpower hook shots are setup shots. You need to just have it set up. You need to know where you're going to go and you go put it in that spot and you put your spin on it. You take the wind out and you are rocking. Now, I am a fan of the thorn, but you don't have to use your thorn. Like, there are sometimes when using the backspin is a good thing, but right there they could have just ran it up. It's not a one trick pony. All right, here we roll. Here we roll. It's so whatever the wind is divided by 1.2. If I can get an opponent, Gubbins, and we are on the fourth hole. Look at that. Isn't that fitting? Gubbins goes first. I don't like the fact that they only have one ring of separation along that transitional line. They could have set it up so they had two and put on all of their side spin. And maybe just a titch of curl. It's amazing that those bushes are... Uh, you're able to hit through them, but you can't hit through the signs. At rest. There's the blue ring off. I'm going to do like a quarter of a ring. And I had six top spin. 2.41 rings. I got it all. I got it all. Let's see if our trajectory got fixed. <laughs> I hit that spot out there in the fairway and it threw my ball to the right. I could actually come. I've got enough room out there on that first bounce. I could actually come in. I might actually be able to come in to where my white ring, I'm right on the transition of my white ring and it might give me a a, a better line at it that is the shot right there my friends I'm going to do that every single time I play this hole the other piece of good news is is that I think with a two power ball you're at like what the plus 12 mark somewhere in that neighborhood if we had a headwind day you could bring out a three power ball so you could still work the wind out. You could bring out a kingmaker, pull it back to the plus 12 mark and put it on that spot. One ring great to the right. You're right. That is the spot right there. 
All right. We know how we're going to play that hole. Or at least I know how I'm going to play it. I think in the past I've played that. You can play that with a... Let's see how much, how much top spin a, a QB has. Let's see. Fifty-five. I think you can play that with a quarterback because it's got the curl you're looking for. You may have to bring out a bigger ball with the quarterback, obviously. But you can get it done. There are ways. You'll have to figure out how to do it with your with your with your clubs that you have. But that is definitely definitely a shot. I feel like having fun this week, so that's definitely how I'm going to play that hole. Hole number five. Hole number five. I think there was a rough bump on this one as well. I think there was a rough bump that we could do from over here. I honestly can't remember this hole. But it seems like there was a rough bump that we could do. I could be wrong. I could. I could be. Play it. Let's play it and see what the deal is. I'll tell you what helped me last week though was it always helps when you make notes. So I usually, because I record my own video, which I encourage all of you to do, you go out there and you shoot around. Don't worry about it. Don't don't sweat about it. Just go out there and do a practice round and just just figure out what you need. If you miss it, if you time out, you're it's not a big deal. Just go out there and have a practice round record it and then you can go back and watch so now you know what ball what club what you're trying to do you've got a plan ah uh, yeah i remember this hole i remember i don't like this hole and that is one way to do it there's so much movement on this that it gets real jerky, but I think I think probably the best way to go for a hole in one is that way, but you can hit it from the other side. I think there's a low there is a spot down below that you can hit with a Goliath that there is a rough bump that you can do where you run it all the way up the hill. Like it's a really long, like you need all the top spin in your Goliath. Loose. And there's Max Grizzly. There's Min. So I'm in mid club here. Is there a rough bump that we can do? I think there is. I'm at mid club, so I'm just going to do the win. Three rings. Isn't it perfect? We'll see if uh, we need to pull out more. That looked pretty good. Didn't pull it enough. Maybe like a 5%. If it was 10%, it would have been 0.3, and I don't think I was 0.3 off right there. Maybe. So even though you're at mid club, do 10% at mid, which is what I did. I pulled it one to one at mid, so I did 10. So add another 10 onto that. Let's see what the math will work out. We got a three mile an hour wind. If you did, if you did a 20%, times the wind divided by 1.1 or excuse me one no nah, it was 1.1 is that right i think with my grizzly actually i probably i think i screwed that up this is another reason why it's important to record your own video because you can do something and then you're not really paying attention you go back and you do the math and you're like dude you made a mistake <laughs> grizzly at mid is one per ring 
and I did a one to one. So I, what I want to do is add on 10%. So it's 1.1 times the wind divided by one. There we go. There we go. Figured it out. Blind squirrel. Hole number six. All right. Now, there are several ways that you can play this. I have never been a fan of going this direction. But I see a lot of people go this direction where they're trying to get their ball to go through this little neck. You can, if you bring out the right stuff and you got a big secondary club. Now it hurts when you're on a headwind day when the wind's going like this, you, it hurts. But you can lay it up right there, it's super easy. And then you can come around this way with your big dog, your cataclysm, and then you can just take it up onto the green. You don't really have a shot at Alvy, but you can get up there and get a, a, a fairly consistent eagle by going that way. If you get out into here, now you start to get an Alvy shot. But the but really legitimately, like I've seen some people hit this direction and they got up here, but most people that hit this direction end up like right in this area. The other way you can do it is you can start off in here and you can try and get bounce, bounce, and then go over and clip the rough and bleed out and get all the way up to the front. And if you make it over, you're typically in this window Whereas if you get over here, it's hard to get into that window. But this shot, you got to get through the rough. And it's easy to get caught up in the rough. If you get caught up in the rough and you have a Nirvana, you could potentially recover. So let's see which way the wind's blowing. And I'm not sure. Buster, I'm going to bring out a bigger ball, but I'm not. I'm, I think it will only help. I think the deal was a four power ball might be the way to go and the reason I'm, I'm saying that is when you're in this type of area let's say you did overpower and you've got your first bounce is here and your second bounce is here with a three power ball but with but what happens is is that if you bring out a bigger ball yeah you can get your spot forward here but if you run all your top spin like that now all of a sudden you pushed your second bounce into the rough and you want your second bounce to hit in the clear in the fairway and then loft so it carries all of its distance and then clip out of the rough. You don't want to hit the rough on your second bounce because then it'll just die. <laughs> Work is over. I forgot to take a lunch today, so <coughs> I was in the midst of it. And just work straight through. I have everybody and their brother calling me right now to give me a job. And I'm trying to avoid everybody. <laughs> That's why I got off and immediately came out and started shooting video for y'all. Okay, where are you going? There is no way in hell that shot's going to work out other than you ending up in the rough. There is no chance. None. Nada. Zilch. Zip. If I put on enough curl so that I can get my trajectory going like this, then I'm trying to get out in that spot over there. And so, 2.6, it's 1.2 per ring. It's a little over two rings. I'm gonna put a little bit of curl on it and just a titch of overpower. Hitting it perfect. Let's see if we can get bounce, diddy bounce, diddy bounce, bounce number one, 
Bounce number two. Not quite! A little more curl. So that rough lengthens out like this, and I came through right here and ended up in the rough, but if I had put a little teeny bit more curl on it, I wouldn't have had to go so far in order to get to the fairway. This is why these little tick marks that are down here on my grid, the different color tick marks, so that I, when I go back and watch the video, I can go, hey, you did it from the green. You were two rings off down here, going off in that direction, and you pulled out to wherever I pulled out. I wasn't paying attention and you need to pull out a little bit more. So what I could do is I could go put in a custom tick or I could just go halfway between and put it on my notes. That way you can try and standardize your curl and as you can see from this distance you can recover. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for this. That's the, sh that's the shot we want. This is one of those older courses where when it's downhill, it means it's downhill. So I'm going to add on 20, and we'll see if that's an over pull or an under pull. Four point two divided by right at max club. Point nine. Well, it should be one. 5.4. Zero 5.04 rings. There's four, five, zero, four. Exactly. Arr. Man, I thought I hit that perfect. Dang it. I didn't pull it enough, even if I had hit it perfect. Theoretically, when you're using a Grizzly and it's maxed out and you're using a 5 power ball, I think it's 0.9 per ring. Or it's, it's 1 per ring, but I normally hit my Grizzly at 0.9. Divided by 0.9 would have been 5.6 rings. Now with the one ring grape i think that would be better i'm gonna hit that at 0 0.9 per ring and we'll try it from there the difficulty is getting out into that spot all right that's max grizzly that means if you end up out in here, if you try and go this direction, you're probably going to be in your sniper. You'll probably be in sniper anyways, because I think I just pitched it forward and I was out here. But where I really should have came through, I came through like this. So if you draw your arc, it wouldn't take much more curl and I would have been in the fairway where it would have bled through the rough and ended up in the fairway. And I would have ended up right in this area right here, which is probably minimum sniper possibly maximum wedge or excuse me long iron all right next hole we got a plan for that i'm i'm gonna work that shot all right it seems to me that this is another one of those holes that once again we were at mid club but we're and i think here we're mid club with the sniper so it's 1.1 but we were actually hitting it at max, so we were adding on 10% and just hitting a max number even though we were at mid club. I'm gonna try it. And I don't know that we needed a big ball here. So I think we can do this with maybe even a navigator. If I can find an opponent. I 
and swap that out. And go down to Marglin. I think I can go down to a navigator. And that puts me at minimum sniper. Give myself a little bit of room to work out when. I think it was just max. And we're at min, so I'm going to do 3 8. I hit it perfect just as it timed out. Arrgh. All right. One Powerball, three rings out. That gives me like three and a quarter, maybe three and a half rings to work out wind. So if it was an absolutely due tailwind, I could work it out on a three five wind. Let's try this again. There's three, eight. Oh, jeez, I thought I hit that one perfect as well. Arr! <laughs> yeah, I think that perfect is right there. I think it's just one, like, I would start off at one-to-one one if you're using a sniper. Start off at one-to-one, one, even though you're at minimum club. Play it like you're playing it at max. That'll get you in the right, that'll get you close. You may have to make a micro adjustment, a plus one or a minus one or something, but I think that'll get us real, real close on that hole. Hole number eight. Hole number eight. Man, if I remember correctly, you can lay it up here, you can lay it up down on the end, or you can try and get it right over here on the other side, and pretty much all three of these are like plus 60%, like literally. Even from over here, you think, wow, I'm, it's still, like, it is a huge adjustment. You can try and go for it where you're running this way. You can try and curl it around and bring it around that way. I have tagged this pillar and ended up in the drink and I have overshot this hole several times trying to get over to the other side but you can you can get over to the other side this would be a great hole for a toss and boost ball and I think a power five ball works very well as well we will try it out we will I'm going to do the drive just straight up. Whatever the wind is, divided by 1.2, and we'll see if it throws me off trajectory. The squirrels are running over onto the greenhouse. And then my dog runs over there, and then they run back underneath of the tree. <laughs> and then as soon as he leaves, they run back out. <laughs> He's playing with the squirrels. Now you could just try and rough bump it out. Or you can try and get a max overpower shot so you're getting it up in there. I'm going to just try the, the first thing here just to try and bounce it out. Four, 4.7, 3.91 rings. It's counted at 4. Okay, 
making it perfect. I almost missed the rough. Definitely need to add on a little bit onto the wind there. For sure. Even from this distance, this is like hole number one. Even if you get close and you're up in the right spot like that, the second shot going to the cup is is not your normal chip shot. It is possible to screw that shot up. Well, you did max overpower to get up into that spot, so then you didn't do max overpower. So close, so close, so far. You gotta hit it perfect. Getting it perfect. In the hole. I'm going to go for trying to get down on the bottom, no matter what the wind is, every single time. Now, on a headwind day, you're definitely going to have to do overpower and try and muscle it over there. But I'm going for the I'm going for the low down shot every time. If you have precision balls, this is definitely a hole I'd bring a precision ball in because your opportunity, if you're going for it down there, to end up in the rough or in the sand is pretty high. But it's but you've got a nice nice shot from down there. If you hit it perfect, if you can hit it perfect, it'll go in. Another very makeable hole. All right, we cannot. We do not. I get a 12 I won't make it look at that minus 19 jeez that's what I'm talking about there are a ton of ton of makeable holes minus 12 is the minimum score so they picked up seven one two three yeah shit they picked up a bunch of holes this is gonna be a wild wild crazy tournament hole number nine what is in store for us for hole number nine? Let's see if I can remember how to play. Ah, oh, I remember how to play. Okay, this hole you can get a loft from up in this area. Try and bridge the gap. And I think this this is another one of those holes that if you have a tailwind, you might be able to do it with a power three ball. But if you have a top, this is why those albatross balls came out when this course came out because if you get a top sand baseball and you're up in here and you catch it right you can really really get down in here towards the cap really get down in there and i think i actually just used my last albatross ball in this last tournament i don't i think i had one of them left i'd had them for a long time see what we have for top spin Let, let's see top spin boost balls top spin boost top spin boost I do have some power three top spin boost balls or excuse me power six top spin boost balls I'm gonna use one of those just so we can just so we can demo it I'm going to use this one because it has less wind and I think I can use the wind. You can lay it up, if you're playing a one-on-one -on -one with a mortal ball, you can lay it up. You can lay it up up here to the top and then take the shot from there. But we're going to, since we're playing in a tournament, we're going for the, we're going to try and get over to the other side. 
especially if people are going to have this big a low of scores, we're going to have to be super aggressive on every one to give us the best opportunity. The deal is, is that you're going to have people like that who shoot a 19. That shoot the 19 in the qualifying round and then can't replicate it in the opening or the final round. You're going to get some people that are that good that they can just replicate it over and over again. But typically, people will peak. And just because they came in at the top in the opening round, coming into the final round, doesn't mean they're going to replicate it. And I like to be one of those people that I've been doing okay until I get to the weekend round. And then that's when I have the best round I shot all week was in the weekend round. But you're going to have enough people out there with enough good equipment that they're going to be trying that every round. And if they catch one of those rounds in the weekend round, you gotta, you're going to have to be aggressive. There's just way too many holes to uh, pick up a shot on this course that you're going to have to be aggressive on it. And you'll have to bring out whatever kind of equipment it takes, whatever ball. This is a playdemic week. They didn't sell a lot of balls last week because, especially for people that are playing rookie, they could use just mortal balls. They could use titans. I'm sure the big boys at the top had to use a lot of big balls, but this week everybody will have to use them. Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Hey, don't don't blame me. I'm just the messenger. just the messenger now you can probably do it with this with this win with a regular power three ball but you will not be able to do it with this with a headwind and even with a four seven tailwind they were still clipped out now i will say that's better than being up at the top it is But it is not better than being way down there. Four point one divided by one point two has three point four one rings. There's three four one. Now let's see if we can overshoot it. Getting it perfect. There you go. Once again, you're in wedge range. Would you rather be there or there? And you can't achieve that without one of those topspin boost balls. That's the whole deal. With one of those power six topspin boost balls, you could probably do it even on a headwind day. Maybe. It's all about your second bounce. see if I can get it in from here. I thought it was close. Close! Hey, there's Max Wedge. I'm going to put on one backspin. Straight at the cup. Three divided by 1.2. It's 2.5 rings. Now I probably should be doing an adjustment here, but I'm just going to do it straight up. In a dead center, perfect. Joe! 
ghost a bit outside. Point one times been 2.75 if I'd added on 10% that would have been too much. Two and a half versus the I would say maybe a 5% adjustment. 05. It would have been 2.6. 2.62. Maybe the plus one. Maybe plus one and round up. There you have it. There you have it. There you go. You got a scouting report and a and a playthrough practice round. Looky looky. And I didn't qualify, so I want I can actually go out there and try and get uh, get get it up. Thanks for watching. Hopefully everybody has a great week. Hopefully I had a good week last week. I am. It, it is tiring having tournaments nonstop, but maybe that's just me. Let me know if you're getting tired of tournaments after tournaments after tournaments. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, my friends. Have a great week. Hey, if anybody's looking, if anybody out there is looking to join a clan, we could we have some room in our clan. I believe. I believe we do. And we we go. The way it works for us is we're in Masters 2, and then we fall back to Masters 1. We'll never fall out of Masters 1. And we go back up to Masters 2, and then we fall back to Masters 1. And so we always have five backs. And everybody's pretty chill. I'm the worst president in the world. I don't know why anybody made me president, because I'm shooting video, so I don't have time to pay too much attention to all the stuff that's going, but we do have room. We have room. We have lots of room. There you go. If you're looking for a clan, if you're looking for some place to park, we take you. Thanks for watching.